YouTube, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing an 808 base tutorial in Logic Pro 10. I'm going to show you how to build a instrument um, for 808 bases using Logic Pro 10's built-in ES2 synth. We're going to show you how to make a simple template that you can edit later and change, but this will be a pretty good starting point to work from. Over here I have got a random little Apple loop kind of trap beat pulled over just from our loop library and I've got our um, instrument all set up on one track. I'm going to show you how to build this from scratch. Let's just take a quick listen. Now it's very simple. It's basically just a very low sine wave with um, a little bit of uh, effects, um, attack, and delay on there. I'm going to show you exactly how to make that instrument. It's a great starting point for any kind of hip-hop, trap, um, even kind of like indie pop kind of stuff, um, 808s in your bass. Um, let's go ahead and get into it. So I've got a new empty instrument track here. All right, so what we're going to do is go to our instrument, go to our ES2 synthesizer, which is down in the middle. And here we've got our default ES2 synthesizer patch open. So I'm going to drag this out. Yours might look slightly differently. I forgot if I've edited the default template at all. But, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you on every single one of these complicated knobs and buttons exactly what we're going to have to look like in order to get that 808 sound. So the first thing we're going to do is drag up so that we're only on our first oscillator. So an 808 at its core is essentially a very low octave sine wave. Right now we are on a saw wave so what we're going to do is click our sine wave. It already doesn't sound that bad because an 808 is not the most complicated sound in the world. What we are going to do is play a little bit with our envelope to get a nice little bit of a click sound in the beginning. If we go back to our original patch, you can hear that there's a little bit of a click in there that kind of helps get sort of a, a kick drum type sound. Um, the original 808 was a drum machine after all. However, over time, it's kind of colloquially come to mean that 808 bass sound in hip hop and trap. But anyways, we're going to start with our sine wave. And then basically, I'm just going to quickly run through all the settings you're going to need to get that sound with the click. We're going to add a little bit of frequency and harmonics in the mid range. And I'll kind of show you the value in that toward the end. But we're going to make it sound a little bit dirtier, but you know, still stick to that simple sine wave sound. So that's all we're doing in this corner. The next thing we're going to do is make our synth mono. So if I go up a couple octaves just to make it easier to hear, right now in poly, we can make chords. Now you might want that, but typically with a bass line, you're not making chords, you're doing more kind of more melodic, kind of keeping the rhythm down. Um, also, when you're in the bass register and you have a bunch of chords, it can get really muddy really fast because those low frequencies are all going to be overlapping on one another. When we set to mono, what happens is if we hold a single note, here, let me open my musical typing. I used command K to bring this up. Now you can see what I'm doing on the screen. So now that we are set to mono, we can no longer make chords. If I play one note sustained and add a new note, it'll switch to that note. If I release, it'll go back to the note I was holding. It'll always play the most recently played note that's held down. It's a very, um, that kind of gliding between notes is a very common 808 effect. Next thing we're going to do is shove our blend all the way to both to 1.0 and then we're going to leave the rest of these filters the same. Over in our top right corner, we're going to bring our tone all the way up to bright. We're going to add a little bit of distortion. So this is the first stage in our chain where we're adding distortion and let me go into 
um, why we want to add distortion to a bass. So what I'm going to do is uh, click our EQ box to bring up an EQ. Now we can visually see where our frequencies are. So what I'm going to do is bring our octave down. You can see our sine wave has its main um, sound right here around 120 hertz. We've got a little bit of a harmonic up here around 250. Um, what we're going to do is add, hold down a note and add distortion in and see what happens. You can see we added a whole bunch of additional frequencies. Now, the reason that's a good thing is because in a bass, um, often your consumers, your music listeners, are listening on not the best system. Hopefully you're watching this video on either a pair of decent speakers or maybe studio headphones. Maybe you're just watching on laptop speakers or earbuds. You might have a lot of trouble hearing these lower decibel sounds. If I go down another octave, this should be very difficult for you to hear on a bass challenged system. Now what happens is a lot of earbuds end up having a low cut up to sometimes up to 80 hertz. You're gonna get a real flimsy sounding bass on those bass challenged systems. But then when you add in the distortion, you can still get your bass to communicate through the mix on a bass challenge system. So we're gonna take off this EQ. We're gonna keep our distortion around three o'clock at uh, three decibels. Now you'll see I have this fat FX um, plugin on my other, tr on my template. And we're gonna add a lot more distortion using that plugin at the end. So we're gonna keep it fairly sane over here. We're gonna leave this on soft instead of hard. Our sign level at zero. Um, leave our intensity all the way down for our grid. And let's bring our speed down to 33 hertz. Next, we've got a number of settings on our filters. What we're going to do is start with all of them off. And now we're going to change the first three of these. So the first thing we're going to do is set, let me bring this back up so you can see. We're going to set our cutoff two in two ways. We're going to set it based on our envelope two as the source via off. And we're also going to allow us to affect it with the mod wheel. So now I can use the mod wheel on my keyboard to influence how quickly the uh, click is happening. And I'll get into that a little bit more when we get into the attack and decay. For our second one, our pitch one, two, three, we're going to base on our env1. Now we're going to move into the bottom half of our ES2 synthesizer and start to create a little bit of an envelope on this sound. On all three of our envelopes, we are going to bring our attack all the way to zero. On envelope one, we're going to bring our delay up to 24 milliseconds. On our envelope two, we're gonna bring our delay up to 650 milliseconds. And by the way, these are just the settings I have saved as a default. Feel free to play with these, you know, just play, play a sound and see what these sliders are doing to the sound. This is the preset that I like to use. We're gonna bring our sustain all the way to zero, leave our time off, bring our R all the way up to 10K velocity all the way down. I'm gonna bring this decay up to 600, let's go 730. Keep our sustain all the way up. Keep our time off R to 15 milliseconds. We're gonna bring our velocity all the way down. Next, we are going to 
take our volume down 2 dBs since we're doing a little bit of distortion and we want to keep this at a normal level. And that is the basic ES2 setting for our 808. So now what I'm going to do is save as. We're going to just call this 808 template. And now anytime we open our ES2, we can go straight to our 808 template. This custom 808 is my other 808. Let's bring this down a little bit so we can see what it sounds like. So you're going to hear a little bit of clicking. Why? This clicking is basically the sine wave running through the envelopes we said. So why do we want that? 808s are often layered or um, rhythmically played alongside your kick. You could also just use your 808 as your kick drum. So what happens is you want your kick to punch through, just like earlier when we were going over um, the EQ of the distortion. Um, we want our kick drum to punch through the mix. So having that high-pitched click can make it much easier to track the rhythm and hear your 808s transition between notes. It's just helping our ears with a little bit of a trick using the upper frequencies. All right, so now let's drag over our, I'm gonna click X to bring up my mixer. I'm gonna option drag our fat effects over. Um, the, w the way you find this fat effects plugin is you go down to multi effects and it is here. So fat is a saturation. Uh, it does a lot of things. In this case, I'm using it for saturation. So I'm adding additional frequencies to our sound um, through basically musical distortions. So this is going to help our 808 punch through the mix. Let's open up our EQ so that we can see what this is doing. We're going to turn off our cut and play with and without. So now you can hear a lot more kind of mid-range. And our bass is really starting to cut through our mix more. Now you can come in here and change this however much you want. So I have, I'll just walk through all of my settings. I have a low cut at 30 hertz. Not very many systems can play below this anyway, unless you've got a subwoofer, in which case you're going down to about 20, which is where human hearing stops. Um, I like to cut out basically around 30 to 32 hertz as my lowest point in any track, just because you're adding a lot of energy. It's going to appear very loud to the computer and to your limiters and compressors, but it's not going to be a lot of audible volume since the human ear cannot hear that low very well, so I'm just cutting off our um, effect at 30 hertz um, all the way up at 20k for our high cut. I've got our low res at 35%, our reject at zero, our high res also at 35%, our grid is all the way bottom left. I'm not using this guy. I'm not using our filter. I've got a distortion effect with 6.2% bit crusher, 43% soft saturation, and 5% very drive, variable drive. I've got a bass enhancer on here with 61% and a 90 hertz tune. That's adding a little bit of a widening effect, as well as got it set to warm. I've got a compressor um, with a minus 6 dB threshold and a 150 millisecond release on a vintage VCA emulation. And on our master, I've got our mix set to 100% and our output 
taken down about 7 dBs because of all the extra um, volume that we are adding using the plugin. All right, now let's drag this down and do a little comparison. There you have it. There is a basic 808 tutorial using Logic's built-in ES2 synthesizer. Play around with your ES2, get to know it. It is an extremely versatile synthesizer. Um, in this case, we're making a bass template. You can go ahead and save your ES2 with your 808 template, as well as your Fat FX into a channel strip template. I've also got this turned off compressor here, which I use for side chaining. And I will probably make a separate tutorial on side chain compression. But basically, I, use, I turn this compressor on and I link it to my kick drum to duck my 808 so its frequencies don't intersect with our kick drum frequencies and cause any kind of phasing or just too much muddiness in the low end. That about wraps this up. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to follow this video along yourself and build your own template. Um, play with the settings as much as you want to get the sound that makes sense in your individual songs. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like, ask any questions in the comments, subscribe for more beginner Logic Pro 10 tutorials, and I will see you next time.